Well, hello and welcome. Welcome to the Andor analysis where we will be talking about Andor episodes one to three. I'm Jamie and you are looking very splendid, may I just say. And uh, yeah, we're watch- if you're watching live, uh, get involved in the chat. If you're watching on the replay, aka in the future, talk to me in the comments. I should tell you that spoilers are potentially coming. And I do want to thank, first of all, Power Droid Girl, Leona, and also Jones Capone. Power Droid Girl came up with the name and or analysis, and Jones Capone designed the logo. He turned those sweet words into a logo for us. So some lovely Geek End uh, collaboration there. So I want to know what you guys thought of Andor. Uh, it's been a while. Uh, I hope you're all doing well. I'll be over to the chat chat shortly not the chat and uh, hey but it's cool to swear now um don't forget that so first of all what did i think of andor i ask myself well first up uh this is a very good looking show it's got blade runner or cyberpunk vibes at times it's dark it's gritty and the soundtrack by uh nicholas brutel it complements this uh this look so well and I have to say as well, it's also refreshing to see something that hasn't been mostly limited to the volume and no shade to the volume there. I think the volume has a place in Star Wars and uh, beyond in terms of production. But this show used Pinewood Studios, the stages there, which of course have used been used for major productions, not just limited to Star Wars for many, many decades, and also locations all over the UK, real locations. And it does show on screen. It feels bigger and better, in my opinion. There was a lot of talk before of this being the most adult Star Wars show yet. And I think that's probably fair. Sex is implied more than ever. There is a brothel. And the first cheeky S-bomb gets dropped, as I alluded to just a few moments ago. So I've been wondering if Star Wars is allowed to now swear like that, am I allowed to swear on this channel? Because that's something I've never done before. Shit, yeah, I am. That's an exclusive for most, uh, not for some, because I did swear on a Patreon-only stream. Because you made me. You forced me into it. You angered me. Uh, Anyway, I probably won't make a habit out of it. In real life, I do swear. I just don't really see the need to do it on this uh, channel. And I know occasionally some youngsters do watch, uh, or like kids of some of yours do watch. So anyway, little one-off there, one-off blip, but Andor made me do it. Um... One of the criticisms I can imagine is being made towards this show, and I say I imagine because I'm now off Twitter, although I am on it. I've still got my accounts. I've just deleted the apps and I've signed out. So I'm I'm not really aware of the discourse apart from a little bit from mid discord where a few we discussed it a little bit and and i hear there's there's some out there but doesn't sound like it's to the levels of anything we've had before so far but i can imagine a major criticism of this show for some will be the fact it is slow and i think that's fair it is slow um i think that's an understandable problem for some people for me it's not a criticism some of my favorite things are slow better call saw sloths slow cooked sloth stew I like the pacing of this show, uh, I have to say. The time we've spent with these characters so far, uh, most of which we are meeting for the first time, the chance for some uh, real character development. And we're only three, well, we are three episodes in. I say only, we're three episodes in, which is, you know, quite a chunk out of previous Star Wars series. That's half of Kenobi, is it not? Or was it not? Yeah, it really feels like we've only just got started. But I can see why they launched with these three episodes. It does make sense now we've seen them i think if they just went with episode one and uh released each one uh per week then i think there would have been a lot more uh, moaning out there perhaps because there is a real great uh gear shift with episode three a great payoff for the first two uh after the first two episodes i mean i enjoyed those first two episodes i guess if you want to get picky there there is some fat you could trim if you like i personally wouldn't but but you could argue for that quite reasonably i suppose they could have opened instead with like a one hour or 90 minute if you weren't to cut anything uh opener an extended opener like they did with bad batch instead of three separate episodes but hey who cares man probably a lot of people but but not me it's fair to say it's not all out star warsy it's far from it but i do think it's still just about star wars enough there isn't 
much humor there's a few moments uh there's a lot of politics uh which i know is not much fun for everybody i personally like it and i would argue that star wars has always had a, a reasonable amount of uh politics attached to it but we do know it will get more star warsy we're going to coruscant we're going to spend time in the senate so yeah more more politics uh i believe that's Coruscant will be in the next episode. Uh, I heard from somebody that's seen episode four. Uh, we've seen in the trailer Mon Mothma, Mon Mothma in the Senate. Uh, there's going to be more empire to come. We've barely had any empire yet. So there's a lot still to come in general, but a lot more Star Wars to come uh, as well. There's still nine episodes to go, man. You've got to remember, this is this is the longest uh, so far, I think, in terms of episodes uh, series uh we've had uh on disney plus star wars related and uh there was a lack of hype going into it which i think can only help this show well something like kenobi and much like the prequels before it could never have lived up to the expectations that they carried going in um so yeah i i actually you know i we've talked about this on these streams before i i personally have been optimistic about this show so i did go in with a level of expectation uh and i feel like they've been met overall uh, i've really enjoyed this so far i'm not in the best star wars show yet camp yet but it is a really intriguing and uh, refreshing start and it feels it feels different and there should be room for different amongst the countless star wars offerings we have now some of which seem to you know, blur into one another. And I think Star Wars needs it. I think a lot of Star Wars fans want it. And it's not going to be for everyone, this style, but that's okay. You've got Mando Free, you've got Ahsoka, you've got Tales of the Jedi and whatever else. Hopefully, hopefully something will be for you. And yeah, I'm going to give my rating a little bit later once I've popped over to the chat. Uh, but the final thing I'll say for now is blue noodles, baby. So you probably enjoyed the version where you couldn't hear me. So for anybody um, watching in the future, because I'll be cutting out the first seven minutes, I, I, I started this with no audio on because I'm an idiot. But you knew that already. So I've gone back to the beginning of the chat. I'm going to have to skip through a lot of this because it's mostly people telling me to speak up or unmute my mic. But I've uh, noticed this one from Chad, which Chad Campbell, which I think is a, a, a great uh, comment. This is what I've wanted out of Star Wars shows. Finally, something that actually feels fresh and new and not a remember one. It's adding to the law and not getting old. Uh, yeah, yeah I, I agree with this. I, 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 I kind of said this uh, as well. I think it is adding to the law. I absolutely agree with that. I have no problem with Easter eggs. I have no problem with fan service either. Uh, but so far, I don't think, I mean, there's... If you're a, if you're a, a Star Wars um, explainer, um, if you're someone that does breakdown videos and all those things that you missed, you know those hidden Easter eggs, etc. I, I can imagine there's not much to go on with uh, these first three episodes so far, but I don't think that's a problem personally. Hey, Peter's back. He says I'm back, the Dark Lord himself. If you do mean me, uh, hello to Jane. Hello to Explaining Computers, Chris. Hope you're doing well. Jones Capone, who I see hasn't seen these episodes yet, so he's been uh, he's diving out. Padroy Girl is well. Jane Flakes. Uh, Clays is here. Uh, Alexandra Stars here. This is all earlier. I'm now going to go back to the front, okay? So um, I'm going to the latest messages now. So if you, if you posted something earlier, please copy and paste it back in now that we're going properly. Um, Simon D's here as well, which is great. Uh, yep backing up the slow burners simon are you watching andor um oh sorry i lost something there on the screen um jane says slow or building tension i was tense from beginning to end of all three so far released and we've got a classic star wars curse there from simon d Ichuta. yeah exactly how rude Brian the Geek says, and go and check out Brian the Geek's channel, by the way. Uh, also uh, doing reviews and uh, reaction type videos and what have you for the Rings of Power and all sorts of things I've noticed, Brian. I loved it. Honestly, my favorite piece of Star Wars in a very long time. I love Rogue One, so I've been hyped for this show and I wasn't disappointed. Yeah, I think if, you're, if you are a Rogue One fan, then yeah. Because a lot of people, and I think mostly people who didn't enjoy Rogue One, and there's a surprisingly uh, large amount of people that didn't enjoy Rogue One, uh, you're kind of 
baffled by this series. Like, why would we want a prequel to a prequel? And was Cassian that interesting? Uh, I think the answer now is yes. And we're going to be spending a lot more time with him. Um, Return of the Jamie. Yep. Uh, Peter, swearing is a good stress uh, relief. I agree. Um, right. So this is where I'm starting now. I'm scrolling downwards now. So copy and paste anything back in in regards to your views. Uh, Rob H is the Senate, just in case you're wondering. Uh, and obviously he said it in uh, a far more sinister tone than I just did. Uh, Silver Hawk, hope you're doing well. What I absolutely love is there's genuine emotions when the soldiers die, like their commanders felt something. Not seen much in Star Wars apart from Clone Troopers series. Yeah, <clears throat> you know, there's time for this in this in this uh, series, it seems. Um, usually, you know, these, these shows we've had on Disney Plus, short episodes, but these are not long episodes, Andor, but they're quite, they're fast paced. And you move on very quickly to the next thing. Padroy Girl, I think it was always the plan to open with all three. We've been told each three episode block is its own thing. Um, Mr. Gilroy, by the way, uh, fantastic work so far. And I'm sure that will continue. Glenn the Geeky P, hope you're doing well. I don't want all Star Wars to be all action. I want other styles of storytelling. Yeah, there's room for all styles of storytelling, you know? And I think it, everything Star, you're not going to like everything Star Wars put, put out, but at least they're now experimenting. At least they're now, uh, there's a bit of diversity to what they're putting out. And to be fair, in different ways, they've been doing that for a while. There was Visions, for example. Um Caleb, hope you're doing well. Caleb Custom Bricks, hello there to you. And Anders Lay, hope you're doing good. Anders, if you've just joined us, uh, you you missed the start. It was very exciting. Gaz Nottingham says, really enjoyed the show, the pace of it, world building and depth of the character introductions are very similar to the Star Wars novels, which I love. Uh, Glenn the Geek Yippie on his channel is reviewing Rings of Power right now over on the What the Adaptation. So in brackets there, you've got uh, the YouTube handle name. So go and check out Glenn's channel. Uh, if you're seeing uh, Rings of Power, if you're watching Rings of Power at the moment, uh, which I am, which I am. Um, Rob H says, very refreshing to see Star Wars take a risk and do something new. Um, yeah, uh, I thought you were going a bit Scottish there. Maybe you are Scottish, Rob. Um, I agree. Uh, they did it before with The Last Jedi and obviously uh, ended up being a bit messy. Simon D says, not watching Andor as I don't have Disney Plus, but might check it out as looks slicker than Kenobi, which looked a bit cheap at times. Yeah. And, you know, um, I said this, I think I said this with the volume on as well. Hey, volume in terms of sound, but I was talking about the volume in terms of the studio. You can really, I mean, this was discussed before Andor came out, before even the trailers for Andor, but the volume is starting to show its limitations with Kenobi. And when I was chatting to Demetrius, who was one of the Vader stunt performers for Kenobi, he was talking about uh, the scene where um, uh, the third sister is at the door and uh, Obi-Wan comes to the door and they're communicating and the stormtroopers all lined out. They were limited to the amount of stormtroopers. It doesn't look particularly grand, you know, the amount of stormtroopers that are there to help capture you know one of the most legendary jedis he was saying that it was basically health and safety limits to how many uh of the 501st uh garrison that they could they could bring into the volume so you know it, it did show its limitations it made it feel uh at times small and i would agree cheap as simon said also and this does not feel cheap this whatever you think to the story the politics whatever else although i would say reserve judgment for now um you have to agree this show looks beautiful it it has movie level production values and uh, i don't know the difference in budgets between this and kenobi i believe it must have had a larger budget because it's a longer series um but i know they spent more time in post-production on this show than they did for kenobi and and and, and that shows uh as well and the fact that they filmed at pinewood and on real locations and big set pieces big sets as well it does it does show on screen 
Cassian, uh, this is from Jane Flakes. Cassian was always a fabulous character. It's just a shame that we know how heartbreaking his end is going to be. Yeah, but we always knew his ending was not going to be good, uh, even at the start of uh, Rogue One. But yeah, now we know exactly how not very good his ending is for him. Uh, Andor is set uh, by BBY, so is Rebels. This is the birth of the rebellion I've been aching to see for years. Um, Disney Plus is probably the most worth it streamer out there. For me, at least, that's from Glenn, the geeky hippie. Yeah, I think they're um, definitely now there's... I mean, I remember when the Man... Well, we didn't get Mando in the UK when it first came out, but I remember... Which, yeah, I guess it was Mando season two when I first subscribed to it. I can't remember if there's anything else. Um, but once that finished, I was out. But now I would certainly, well, I just use my brothers at the moment, but I, I would I would definitely pay for it myself if I didn't have the free option for my brother. Um, because, yeah, there's, there's great non Star Wars content and the documentaries uh, are, are mostly good. ILM, the um, galleries, uh, documentaries. And I'm really enjoying the, uh, I can't remember its name now. Welcome to Wrexham the uh, Ryan Reynolds uh, buying Wrexham Football Club documentary uh, as well. So, you know, there's a lot of non-Marvel, non-Star Wars uh, content on there now. Simon D asks, uh, have Gar has Gareth Edwards been given the boot? There's no mention of him anywhere, despite setting the visual style over Rogue One. Yeah, there's literally no mention of him. It's it's kind of odd. It's kind of odd. And he doesn't, I mean, I'm sure he, he is active. He's probably quietly working very hard on something. But I imagine next time he's doing interview rounds, that will be asked. I hope it's asked because I'd be interested. Um, we'll never really know what happened there on Rogue One. I mean, from what I've heard, the people I've interviewed attached to the movie, they said it was all, you know, hot air. Like the reality is reshoots are normal. Um, but then people who have, you know, access to leaks and what have you, um, have said otherwise and you could say that well the people i'm talking to are it's in their interest to be positive about working on star wars because they want to continue working on star wars so i don't know really of course i don't know uh, i don't really know what happened there with gareth edwards but i do think it's a shame that he appears to not be involved at all with uh andal um Silverhawk says there's big Star Wars YouTubers upset with this because it doesn't have Force users, so it doesn't feel the same. Yeah, yeah. Lol is fair there, Silverhawk. I don't think it was ever advertised. I mean, Rogue One, apart from um, Donnie Yen's character and obviously Vader cameos, wasn't force centered was it like what were people expecting from this show uh rob h adds sadly it seems gareth edwards has been totally blacklisted um a lot of love for rebels i can see from glenn from silverhawk as well and jones capone is still here which is dangerous because you haven't seen um the uh and all episodes yet as we've seen jamie definitely prefers to avoid the volume I'm an idiot. I know. I've got to clip out the first seven minutes uh, when this finishes. Um, right. I'm just heading down a little bit into the chat. Uh, start getting your scores in, everybody. So how would you rate? Take the three episodes as one. I, I like the fact we haven't really gone heavy with spoilers. So I know Jones Capone's here, uh, Simon's here, who haven't seen um, these episodes yet. I don't think we spoiled too much, uh, to be honest. And, that, and that, that's cool. That's cool. There's no, no harm in that. Um, so start getting your scores in for the three episodes combined out of 10. Uh, I'm not sure what Jane's talking about here. The Star Wars zombies. Oh, something something from a book. Gave her shivers. Simon D says, Diego is obviously way cheaper than Ewan, plus Kenobi was shot during the height of pandemic, which I'm sure messed up production. Yeah, and also messed up production costs, you know, um, with the various measures uh, brought in. But yeah, you're absolutely right. Ewan as an actor and executive producer, which Diego is of Andor, but still far more expensive and i'm sure took a massive chunk of that uh budget um but you know uh when all all is said and done ewan is so good so good uh i have to say um i finished two seasons now of rebels jones capone i'll be talking about it soon i've only just finished season two 
of rebels. But there's been so much, and this is the problem with life at the moment in terms of consuming um, live action materials on, well, with me, a laptop screen. You know, we've had Ozark, we've had Better Call Saul, we've had Kenobi, we've got Andor now. It's, it rings of power. It's it's very difficult to keep up. And Rebels obviously being something that I missed years ago, it's, it's, it's on the back burner. But I'm slowly getting there. And I'm now two seasons in, which I will talk about. I will talk about. Um, what's this horror books uh, chat going on? Power Droid Girl now is at it. Red Harvest and Death Troopers, the two horror books. Brian the Geek says, it is odd Gareth has disappeared. We're talking about Gareth Edwards here. Kind of a shame he's not involved because he seems to have done a great job. And also uh, on the lack of Force users, which apparently is uh, upsetting some people. I like that there's no Force users. Honestly, it makes it different and more grounded. Different is the word here. There's no shame in being different. Uh, Rob H says, I did hear that Gareth Edwards took his family to see Rogue One in IMAX during its recent short-term release. Cool. I've uh, I've been recording a few interviews recently. Um, some of you know who one of them is with, because one of them is with a bit of a ledge. Uh, and yeah, I'm slowly, you know, I'm having to, no, I'm not able to release them very fast at the moment because of edit time. And I put things on Patreon first like that anyway, with interviews and Lightspeed Tonight and what have you. Um, so it'll be a little while before uh, some of this stuff uh, sees the light of general YouTube day. But uh, I, yeah, long story short, I'm putting out requests again for interviews. And uh, why not try for Gareth Edwards? Why not? He's, he's a genuine fan. So I think he'd just be happy to chat in general when it comes to Star Wars. All right, I can see the ratings uh, coming in. And a major spoiler there. Um, oh, one thing on uh, Rose Squadron, which is topical. After watching Top Gun, it's on Simon D here, Top Gun Maverick, they could have made Rose Squadron or Star Wars film like that. Imagine an X-Wing cockpit built on a real plane and flying it around real backdrops. Crew style. Yeah, and it looks like Rogue Squadron now is um, has been blown up just like Cassian, which is uh, a shame. I don't know when we're going to see another Star Wars movie again on the big screen. All right, Glenn, the Geeky Hippie has given us individual scores, 7.5 for episode one, eight for episode two, eight for episode three, overall 7.9 out of 10 for the three episodes. Brian the Geek has given it 9.5 out of 10. That's a very big start, just because I can't ever give something a full 10 out of 10, but I'm tempted to break my rule. I just loved it. Well, you know, hold tight, hold tight for now. Uh, 25 out of 30 from uh, Silverhawk there, only because it started slow. I'm impressed, but if they didn't drop three episodes... The first step would not have been enough. Um, yeah, Brian, it is, it is, man. It is. Um, I mean, I don't regret niching down to Star Wars only. I have to say there's so much out there uh, that I'd love to talk about. Uh, Chris from Explaining Computers, uh, 7 out of 10 for the first three episodes as a block, but I would give an 8 out of 10 for episode three. So I think seven, I mean, we're talking, if, we, if we go individual scores, uh, I think seven is the lowest we've had so far, I think. Uh, Jane Flakes, episodes one to three, I score 10.5 out of 12. Imperial, not metric. As always, we know, Jane, we know. So we're seeing some pretty uh, impressive scores uh, coming in. Tony Gilroy took over Rogue One, and I figure it's the reason I love that film so much. So Rogue One owes more to him than Gareth and Gilroy created this show. Gilroy did create this show, but... I think Gareth Edwards deserves a lot more uh, credit for his involvement with Rogue One. And we don't really know exactly what went on there, but Gareth Edwards is the director of that movie. Um, oh, of course, of course. Once he's canon, once Wameris is canon, we're not, we're not going to be, we're not going to be tossed onto the expanded universe pile with Wameris. It's got to be canon first. And then the world will be delivered. Uh, nine out of ten from Power Droid Girl, only because I need to give it somewhere to go. I loved it. And that's great. And I know how uh, much uh, Leona Power Droid Girl has been uh, looking forward to it. Peter, and I hope you've been well. I don't, Peter, I don't think you were with us during Kenobi. First two episodes, 5.9. And only, only because of the looks and the music, they were boring as hell. 7.5 for episode three. Well, you know, there was a major gear shift uh, for episode uh three um so maybe you know uh we'll continue moving up the gears for you peter moving forward i think 
there's going to be some more slow burning episodes. Um, you know, we are spending time in the Senate after all, and, and I'm all there for that. But I think we might get some more low scores from Peter moving forward. But hey, who knows? I don't. Glaze, episode one to three gets nine out of ten from me. Love the slow pace. And I agree. And don't get me wrong. I want some fast paced Star Wars again. I want that. But there's room for it all, isn't there? And we've got Mando Free coming. Uh, Rogue Squadron has not been cancelled, just removed from the schedule. There is still hope. Cool, I hope so. I hope so. But it just just, just seems like it's doomed. Dave McKay, hope you're doing well. Uh, nine out of ten, not enough Mothma. N no Mothma, yeah. Uh, but I think the Mothma is to come. The return of the Moth is, I think, one episode away. I think episode four. Uh, I've heard Coruscant is in episode four. So, um... I assume that might be the Grand Moth's return. That Grand Moth. Maybe we'll see the other Moth. Um, right. Gaz Nottingham's got a score here. 8.5 out of 10. So that's for the three episodes. Tough to score at this stage, but loving it so far. Great. Uh, Rob H. I'll give Andor uh, one to three. Uh, what, 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 what are you writing here? 1.1 1. 1 to three A docking bay. Uh, 0.94 out of... I'm very confused by this. Uh, the CG was a little iffy in places, but this era and even Cassian now has so much percent potential. Clever little backstory building. Yeah, there's a lot of building going on there. Um, and I do like the docking bay uh, reference there, but I, I don't know how to sort of break that into a into a score. Everybody's trying to, uh, you know, I've got Jane with her uh, imperial um, scoring system, and uh, we had a what out of thirty five uh, earlier as well. Was it Silverhawk? Um, yeah, yeah, and <laughs> much cheaper option to make Rose Squadron uh, an animated show. Uh, Jones Capone, um, I'm confident Wilmeras can become canon, just keep dropping loads of light speed tonight episodes, and then all it takes is a little uh, cameo on the passing uh, background screen and a shot of course, and yeah, exactly, you know, it's so easy to be, um, to be canon these days. Uh, and I, and I can't, in fact, Jones, you know, this, uh, there are um, five episodes of light speed tonight recorded now. And uh, it's I've, I've moaned about this before. One is pretty much edited and good to go. So that'll be dropping on Patreon soon. Um, it's so painful to edit. And I'm really struggling uh, with time at the moment, um, trying to make a living and things. So, um, yeah, it's but it's there. It's there. I'm not, you know, I'm not going to give up on it. Uh, I think it's got potential. You know, it's this. It disappoints me every time I make an episode because I want it. I, I know it can be better. But we're limited, man. We're limited. And maybe one day we won't be as limited. Gaz Nottingham, uh, Jamie, without going into detail, what did you think of the Rebels season two finale? Um, yeah, no, I, I, I uh, really enjoyed the, um, it was two-parter, wasn't it? Um, the finale with uh, Maul and, yeah, the Sith Temple and Vader showing up and the Inquisitors. Yeah, it was a great payoff because I enjoyed season one um, and I only kept at it or with it really because so many people told me to keep going, you know. And at one point, people told me to keep going saying, you know, wait till you get till later on in season two. That's when it really, you know, kicks off. And I think Andor will be like that one day, you know, we'll be saying to people, no, no, just wait till episode five, you know. And, and some people complain that Breaking Bad's too slow. And it's like, no, 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 no get to season two um and it'll all be worthwhile so no i uh, i i enjoyed season one and uh i up until the finale season two to be honest was pretty similar vibe for me in terms of season one i was just enjoying it i like i know chad says it's some of the best star wars out there i don't agree with that still and in terms of i know when um kenobi and vader had the rematch part two in kenobi people were saying it was a copy of uh, rebels with the ahsoka with ahsoka there and you know the helmet being uh ripped off slightly uh, exposing anakin's uh eye um of course yeah absolutely see the comparisons there but there's no comparison between the two you know i much prefer the live action version because i am just live action over animation um but no I, i'm sticking with it and i will be making a video about it as well uh and to go in, in more detail with it as well i've made a load of notes to turn into video form um right i think we're all good yeah jane has mentioned this a few times that a box of tissues is needed for season four of rebels so we've had a lot of high scores for and the first three episodes uh i am gonna give the first three episodes overall and there is definitely uh potential for me to go back and uh, upgrade this I'm going with an 8 out of 10 
for now, which I think is very high. And again, there is potential to go back and upgrade that because, you know, I think we've all established that this is going to be a slow burn thing. And even though we know exactly where it's going, we don't know how it's going to get there. And that's quite exciting. Uh, Simon D, would you say Mando season one is the best Disney era Star Wars content or one of the films Kenobi? No, I, I would go with Mando season one so far, personally. Um, both Mando seasons. I can't obviously put Andor in the list yet, but I imagine it's going to be quite high up there. Um, probably ahead of Kenobi. Uh, if we're talking about Disney era Star Wars content, Disney Plus era or Disney in general, if we're talking about the TV shows, I uh, definitely have Mando top two seasons up there, top two. Uh, at the moment, Kenobi, uh, then Book of Boba. Uh, in terms of live action anyway. And, you know, I'm always live action over over animation. So even if we were to include the animation, I'd have Bad Batch at the bottom. And uh, I enjoyed Bad Batch. Um, but I imagine Andor's going to be up there. Um, yeah, if we're bringing the movies into it, it's more complicated. Uh, anyone anticipating an Ian McDermott cameo? His Kenobi appearance looked a bit rushed, filmed over StreamYard, Jamie style. Yeah, but at least they turned the microphone on. Um, I, I suppose it's possible. But the thing is with uh, Andor, it's two seasons confirmed, I believe. So I imagine they're going to hold. I don't see why we wouldn't see Tarkin, uh, the Emperor. Certainly they sh they'll be mentioned, I'm sure, Vader. But I have a feeling they might hold off on big legacy character cameos appearances till the next season or maybe right at the end of this season who knows who knows i mean at the moment there's very little empire involvement but of course that is about to uh to change uh peter agrees that mando season one is the best of the tv shows um right yeah gaz nottingham has made an important point now is a good time if you haven't already and you should have to hit the like button everybody um I agree, CG Tarkin. I, I I like that. Guy Henry. They could bring Guy Henry back. Isn't um the hospital drama that he's in getting like binned on the BBC? Or is that the other one? There's two, isn't there? Holby City and Casualty. And I never know which one's getting binned, and I never know which one Guy Henry's in. If he is still in it, I don't even know, to be honest. Uh, I can't even turn a microphone on for a live stream. But uh yeah. Anyway, I think there's a, there's a lot of good stuff to come with um Andor. And yeah, whilst I'm not in the camp of it's the best thing yet, uh I'm definitely very satisfied with what we've had so far, and I'm glad to see the majority of people are enjoying it uh, too. And it doesn't seem like anybody here is dismissing it, you know. Um, I think we're all going to stick with it. And Power Droid Girl uh, says here that season two isn't airing until 2024. It's going to be a long wait. But then it's not really when you think about all the Star Wars stuff you've got before then. In fact, I was almost expecting something later than 2024 with all that's to come. I guess they'll be going into production. Um, early next year i suppose um which is cool all right then um i will uh put this comment from jones up mando is simply the character that boba fett should have been as much as i love the mandalorian we should really only have one show and Bo boba fett should be that quiet cool mounty hunter so um I think that's it. So everybody, uh, I apologize uh, for the, uh, well, pro probably the more exciting start, seven minutes of silence. If you're watching in the future, you won't know what I'm talking about because I'm cutting it out. Uh, but the stream will still be up just with the first seven minutes or so removed. So thank you everybody for uh, joining. We'll be back this time next week. Uh, looking forward to it. And uh, you know what you got to do now. You got to start waving everybody. And hello to Dave Milano as well. Uh, keep waving. Keep waving. I'm hitting in broadcast. There's an awkward lag. So if you're new here, wave. Wave, God damn it. Keep waving.